Today we'll be discussing our drilling risk assessment simulation and modeling solution. I will start with a brief introduction, set context, and then we'll move immediately into the demonstration of the solution itself. To start, I'd like to say a few words about the Rapid Response Institute. We are a consultancy that provides our global clients with solutions and tools that maximize their shareholder value. In addition to consulting and advisory service, we have developed several models, including the economic value proposition matrix, which is a very good way to look at the high number of variables impact on any given capital investment. The risk assessment game that we're going to be looking at today is just one of several series games that we provide. We develop training solutions as well as training programs themselves. We're active with cross-cultural negotiation activities and can, and can game the discussions between folks of different cultures to see how they would work together. Uh, not just the ethnicity of um, different countries and different regions of the world, but the cultural differences between an organization and perhaps its supplier or its customers. And finally, we do a number of uh, analytics, business uh, intelligence, and studies as, as well. Let's talk briefly about the project of, uh, of drilling an oil and gas well. As you see on the graphic, uh, the drilling risk assessment process begins with the project definition at the very beginning, before the, the plan's even in place, through planning and design, uh, where the ability to influence cost is much greater than later in the project where we've done a lot of work and uh, change management becomes a bigger cost item. This solution you're going to see today was developed with and by the industry. It is a real world solution. It is built around the Project Management Institute's um, body of knowledge, uh, commonly called PMBOK. It is modular in design with a drilling risk assessment part that you will talk about today. It's simply one of the project modules that we have the ability to provide our customers. Uh, the model you'll see today is a, is a demonstration, but it can be conducted to real databases. And it is a collaborative solution that's cloud enabled, so individuals from all over the world can game the, the uh, different scenarios and thus mitigate the risk by finding the best way uh, to go forward. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because this is an example that's in the in the this demo itself, but I would want to see, show you that on the left you see there are more than 30 input variables. That's a lot of different things to manage. There's a lot of different uh, sensitivities and re relationships among those variables. On the On the right side what we look is a typical output where we're looking at the level of risk uh, and a confidence set model as well as a rank order of the the uh, service company we're going to use and the drilling program that we're going to use. This is very similar to the way um, uh, military pilots and commercial pilots uh, train in, com in, in their simulators where uh, worst case scenario is we just hit reset, but it does enable us to look at a number of different solutions and see what the best one might be. So with that, let's take a look at the model. The graphic you see before you is the drilling risk assessment process, uh, beginning with the formation of the project team through a first gate relatively early in the process where the initial uh, thinking is, okay, does this meet the requirements that the organization has for a risk profile, do we need more data, etc. In this point you can also stop the project. Uh, the second gate is further on and the decision here is go no go for the uh, authorization for uh, expenditures or the AFE. So across the top you see uh, a number of boxes and I'm not going to go into them for purpose of this demonstration but this is the the G and G, uh, the geology, the geophysics, the petrophysics, that information that comes from reservoir knowledge itself that feeds into the system. On the bottom you see the engineering data and the, inf and the information that the service companies may be able to provide you from their expertise. And it, the, the thing to take away from this is as we get through this first process we just keep adding more and more data. We identify gaps. Uh, we look at the sensitivities and the relationships that these various variables, variables may have with each other. So I want to take a quick look at the model itself. I'm not going to spend much time on this because the user would not see this, but this is the, the, the model itself. Now you'll notice I put this drilling process over here again, and in the model it is the initiation phase and the planning phase. As I mentioned earlier, this ties back to the PMI, PMBOK processes. And you see all the different variables, and each of these can have a relationship. There's, uh, these lines are simplified for purposes of the, of the uh, visualization. 
but there could be a lot more different, a lot more independencies there. I want to go to the control panel. And again, you see this is set up in stage one, which is this first stage here, and stage two, which is the additional stage. And the 30 or more variables that we're looking at include things from outside issues, selection of criteria for the well, and confidence that we have in the model, uh, other processes from, so for example, a project scope statement, the earth model, the engineering model, and then we can rank order service companies. And uh, this could be the availability of the service company, the reputation the service company has in this particular part of the world, uh, and, our ex and our experience with the service company. Finally, is the project on schedule? Sometimes being early for various components is not any more helpful than being late because then you still have people waiting on uh, various goods and services to arrive. Uh, stage two, we can make more assumptions about the quality of our drilling assumptions, the contingencies we may have, cost of additional data, uh, health, environment, and safety issues, and, and how about human resources? Do we have the people and what are their capabilities? And in a confidence in our drilling options. And on this, there are three options here. I've chosen for purposes of the demo to only look at option A and then to uh, make dummy options B and C, which would have all these same variables in here. So you'll notice that we have the ability to move the lever on the demo and in this case there is no data associated with the model but in fact this could be tied back to databases and it could be tied into um, other information that we have. One of the things about using these levers as you see is if we have a group of uh, 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 very knowledgeable a very knowledgeable team working on this they can make subjective decisions so we can put subjective information into the math model itself and that's one of the real powers of this. So what I want to go ahead and, and, well, let me show you the output. And we've seen this uh, simplified a level of risk, confidence you have in the model, and the ranking of the, the companies that, that we're going to use uh, in terms of the service providers, as well as uh, the options that we have for drilling. You notice I said option A is fully defined, option B and C provide a, a dummy up information. But what we want to do is look at the simplified area and say, okay, what's the level of risk and how confidence do how much confidence do we have in the model? So let's go back to the control room. Let's run this and say, okay, our project scope is well defined. We pretty well understand it. We've got a good understanding of what's going on. We've done this before, for example. Uh, and we'll, we'll go ahead and run a simulation. Now what you'll see is the beater jumping around because it's doing an iterative process. We're looking at about a thousand iterations and we're driving towards convergence. So you see the risk model in this particular case would be a medium, medium to low, and the confidence would be um, fairly low. So, um, but if I poorly define it, in fact, it should probably um, do worse. And we'll um, run it again and see uh, what happens. And again, you see the same thing as it goes through the iterations, and it wouldn't pay any attention to those. It's just a matter of where it ends up. And you see, in this case, it's about the same, a little confidence, a little higher. So what that tells us um, that the, in this particular instance, uh, this variable is not as sensitive as what. If I moved it further over and it was more poorly defined, it might, in fact, uh, do much worse. Uh, so the idea here is to show you that uh, these different variables can be moved independently. Uh, we can rank company B higher and then company C uh, lower and, um, and it allows us to look at a large number of variables uh, at one time. Now the trick here is you've got to manage this process because if you start moving lots of variables around and you won't know the, what the sensitivity is and you won't know what responded to, to what. But, but that's the idea uh, to, is to take a develop a computer simulation where we can run scenarios over and over and over and we can compare scenarios and we can feed this model with real data so that when we make a decision about the risk associated with any given drilling program this is one tool to enable us to take a look at that uh, on the computer and so the there's no harm no foul if in fact we um, one of the alternatives does not look that good then we hit reset and run it again now the the system itself does not give you an answer. Uh, it, it, you're never going to say that, okay, this particular uh, scenario is much more valuable than the scenario number two. What it's most powerful is, is it enables you to look at all of these variables and how they interface and what their sensitivities are within this project. 
And again, you would probably not use a system like this to, do, to drill a, a shale well, for example, a shale gas up in um, North Dakota, but you certainly might use it and where it has been used is in large, expensive, deep water uh, areas with um, high pressure, high temperature, sour gas, those kinds of issues where uh, you're going to spend a lot of money and we can model the risk assessment process up front on the computer before we even begin to do anything in the field. So this can go on early in the, uh, the life cycle and it can continue throughout the project. You can run these simulations repeatedly as you develop new information. You can make changes. As I mentioned earlier, we are looking at the um, early part of the, the drilling assessment process from this side on the right on down would be additional uh, project management activities and there are modules similar to the one that we put together here for drilling risk that would move down into these other phases. So you theoretically and realistically even can model a project at any stage uh, at any level of detail that you care to. If you'd like to receive more information about our drilling risk assessment solution or any of our other products and solutions, please feel free to contact us. We look forward to hearing from you and we'd be happy to provide a more in-depth demonstration at your convenience. Thank you for your time uh, and have a good day.